So I found a backrooms level that literally takes place inside of a video game, specifically Mario 64. The areas in this level are horrifying and uncanny, and I think you'll be stuck here for a long time if you do get sent. So without further ado, today I'm going to be explaining backrooms level 230. Let's get into the video, shall we? Level 230 of the Backrooms, also known as the Shallow Simulation, has been given a Class Omega rating due to its glitched properties, its strange effects, and its shifting zones throughout the entire complex. And it's a video game, literally. Think of the level's atmosphere as an old Mario game, and that'll get the right picture in your mind. The level is an infinite expanse of spaces and corridors and hallways and environments that resemble the early 3D animations from Mario 64. The structure of this level is very enigmatic in nature, and it seems to almost be in a state of collapse constantly. Kind of like me, actually, now that I think about it. The level is made out of some sort of indestructible smooth material that has a similar feel as plastic. It almost feels fake. The material is very slick to the touch, and it's also very cool to the touch as well. The geometry in this level is fully Euclidean, which means you can explore the level and the areas without getting glitched around. However, the level does tend to warp and shift layouts at random times. This will lead to rooms and objects reappearing and vanishing right before your very eyes at completely, utterly random times. The majority of this level has a black and white checkered floor made of the same plastic as everything else, and the walls are known to range from a dark red to blues to PNGs of cloud textures and stone textures and tree textures and all that stuff, and all of it has that fake plastic feeling to it. Now, according to rumors and whispers around the back rooms, this level might be sentient in and of itself, and all of those warps and changes that happen to it are actually thought to be because the level has its own mind, which I think is a pretty interesting thing to think about. The main part of the level that you'll start in is this area with the checkered floorboard, the red halls, and the weird plasticky texture. But there are three other sub areas of this level that make it even bigger and more expansive, and I will be getting into these very anomalous places right now. All of these sublevels are assumed to be infinite, by the way, so just for convenience purposes, we call them sub areas, even though they're kind of just part of the level. You get what I'm saying. The first sublevel is the castle and it's been given a class one difficulty due to its environment being sort of dangerous because of its temperature. This is the first sub area that you'll encounter while exploring and it takes the appearance of a castle from Mario 64. Unlike the game though, the castle is infinite and you can go in the basement forever because it just expands downwards. Now, the top couple levels of the castle are exactly identical to the game. There are staircases with red colored floors and stone walls with an outside scene from like the clouds and PNGs and stuff. There are dark blue ceilings and checkerboard floors throughout. This entire place feels very corrosive and glitchy and there is visible static in the air when you're trying to look it really feels like you're in a screen there are also no resources here no food or water or anything and the temperature is constantly under freezing so it'll be very cold in these plastic hallways which eventually could lead to danger if you stay for too long there are no entities in this area forever which is kind of nice and it's just you in these dark empty hallways forever and ever to escape the sub level you're gonna need to jump through any of the paintings that you see stuck on the wall to get to the sub level that's in the painting which means that it is fairly easy to escape if you want to. The next sub area is called the Sunken City, and this place takes the appearance of the wet dry world from Mario 64, which is a very famous little space picture, but this sub level does not have the video game graphics. Instead, it looks like that wet dry city, except with real buildings, not video game graphics which I think is pretty cool. The city is infinite in size and it is fully explorable, but it is submerged under some sort of water. Even though it is underwater, you can survive here for very long periods of time, like up to an hour without needing to breathe. It's unknown how this happens, it's just thought that the level gives you more oxygen in your lungs. You can swim around the city, you can walk around it and explore everything, and some people actually think that this sub-level has more than meets the eye to it. 
You see, some wanderers believe that if you swim up to the top of the water, above the city, above the water, and past it all, and you breach the surface above the water, you will be able to escape the back rooms and be back into reality. Now, we don't know if this is true, because I don't think anyone thinks you can actually escape, but a lot of people do believe this is the exit for some reason. So let me know what you think. Do you think it'll work? I don't know. But this sublevel is very uncanny to say the least. An underground city that you're forced to explore through? Pretty spooky. You can actually exit this sublevel to get to level 7 by no clipping through the water, which is a pretty cool way to escape. The third and the final and the most dangerous sublevel is called the Haunt, and it takes the appearance of a large, haunted, abandoned mansion in the middle of a dark and desolate forest. Pretty much, it is just Luigi's Haunted Mansion from the game. And this sublevel is extremely dangerous for anyone who comes here. It's known far and wide for its entities roaming around, and the mental cognito hazard that the sublevel can give to everybody. This cognito hazard causes disturbing hallucinations, panic attacks, and anxiety for anybody exploring here. The mansion is very dark and corrosive in and of itself, and it's very staticky and pixelated and grainy to even open your eyes here. Everything feels so fake and uncanny and plastic, but it's also so real. There are Smilers and Death Moths and Anithikas and other entities roaming around the hallways here. All of them are rendered in pixelated Mario 64 graphics, so they all look laggy and old. But they're still very real, and they're very dangerous. Exploring this mansion will essentially be a death sentence for those who arrive here unknowingly. Because if you don't know how to escape, the likelihood is you're probably going to get stuck in the hallway somewhere and then consumed by something. The way you escape it is by finding an actual painting of that haunted mansion on the wall somewhere here, running and jumping through it, and you'll be sent back to the main part of the beginning of the level. However, this exit is notoriously hard to find, so good luck for that. You might not make it. I don't know. To enter the entire level, you can find an N64 Mario cartridge on any backrooms level and touch it to be sent to the main part. And to exit, you can use a sublevel and their paintings to jump out of that sublevel to a main level. But yeah, this was a backrooms level that seemingly takes place inside of a video game. There's only a few like this, and I've always found them so interesting, because a lot of theories about the backrooms is that they are some kind of game, and the fact that this exists in a game that most of us played as children, it kind of makes it even more scarier that you could get stuck here while exploring the hellscape that we already know. Let me know if you think there's other backrooms levels that do take place in the games that I haven't talked about, and I think I should go over them, maybe make it a series or something. But Mario's always been uncanny, and especially looking back at those weird plasticky graphics from the early 2000s, it's definitely got this weird liminal vibe to it, and I'm glad that there's a backrooms level about it. But yeah, that was the Mario video game themed level. I know these Mario liminal spaces have always been very popular in the Lim Space community, and I think it's pretty cool to finally see a level with some lore added to it. I don't know, the game was already very uncanny. It always kind of reminded me of the back rooms. Hopefully you enjoyed. I did. Thank you for all you do. Check the links below for my third channel, Spoogly, my Twitter, my Instagram, all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. With all that said, love and appreciate y'all, and I will see you in the next video.